Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. This is the ongoing saga of trying to repair this Bali 35 MPU board that when we turned it on we just got one the light, the LED just stuck on and we've been trying to figure out this I think maybe part four or so of this series where I'm kind of slowly going along trying to figure out what's wrong and, and uh, diagnosing the problems. Uh, in the last step video in order to get the first thing to flash there's a certain number of chips that are needed so I took another board that was known good and started swapping chips the main processing thing the 6821 and then the main program ROM over back and forth to see if any of these chips were bad and I got the good known good board to continue booting so I knew that it wasn't any of the chips then we started checking for voltages on certain pins here of the 6800 to find out if there's other issues that are causing the game to not boot up. <coughs> so I made a little reference here that I, that I use where I've got the picture of the CPU right there and I've got it marked that uh, pin 1 and let me show you how you read which pins are which. You'll see on every MPU there's a notch on one side, or every chip there's a notch on one side right there. Wherever that notch is, it, um, to the right of it, if it's facing downward, is going to be pin 1, and it, and it goes counterclockwise across the chip. So this is a 40-pin chip. So the, with the notch right below, uh, to the left, this is going to be pin 1, this is going to be pin 20, this is going to be pin 21 and this is going to be pin 40. So pin 1 and pin 40. So if you're looking for, say, pin 3, it's going to be notch 1, 2, 3, third pin. If you're looking for pin 36 or 37, it's going to be 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, that, like that. So I've marked on my sheet here in the CPU which pins should be reading which voltages. So what we want to check now is there's a clock circuit here that supplies some lower voltages to the 6800 and we're going we, we're checking to see if those voltages are good. So instead of checking a pin, the pins on the actual um, CPU, which is really kind of dangerous. If you've got, and I don't have, I don't have power to this, so I'm not going to do this in real time because I don't want to be distracted filming and accidentally short some pins. But when you, what you usually do is you take your um, your black lead and you put it to the ground over here. And I would uh, I would have an, I would have another little alligator clip holding it. And then I would put the meter on DC volts and I would touch the pins. Now we know that pin 40 is supposed to be the 5 volts into this so we would touch this pin 40, the very edge, and we would look for a reading on our meter to get 5, 5, 4.7 to 5.2 volts DC. Um, I got the voltage there so I knew that the, that the, the, the raw 5 volts going into the uh, MPU was there. So now the next thing we do is we check to see if the voltage going through the clock circuit that feeds lower voltages to some of the parts of the chip are there. And so if you look that up, that's pin 3 and pin 37. So pin 3 is, a sp is supposed to be 2.4 volts and pin 37 is supposed to be 2.6 volts. So now whenever you're checking something on here, it's, this is pretty scary trying to touch on this. And imagine doing it in the game. You know, it's much easier to have a test bench here where you've got the board out and you can be a little bit more meticulous about making sure. And they have smaller points and little things you can clip on. But there's an easy way to check these other voltages on the MPU. Um, you don't have to actually touch the pins of the CPU. You can touch these two resistors that are above and below, R8 and R9. So you'll see them. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit closer. Okay, so this is R9 and this is R8. And those are directly feeding pin 37 and pin 3. So to test voltages, ground out your black lead and touch the red lead to the right side of R9. And you should read uh, 2.4 volts DC. Touch it to the right side of R8 and you should read 2.6 volts DC. In my case, 
I read like four volt volts, 4.3 volts on one and zero on the other. So something's wrong. There's definitely a problem. So that's where you bust out the schematics. And then this is the schematics. There's the U9, the MPU chip. You can see pin three expecting um, 2.4 volts. Pin 37 expecting uh, 2.5 volts or so. Um, so that so we follow these two leads, and this is the goes into this circuit right here, which is the clock circuit. And the clock circuit has five volts coming in right there, and it's going through a couple of uh, resistors, and then it goes into U16, which is a 9602, and then from there it's fed into U15. So you can you can look at the schematic. And you can see the pinouts on this U16, and you see 5 volts goes in, and then 2.3 volts comes out on pin 7, and 2.2 volts comes out on pin 10. So what we want to do is check with the, with the rig powered up, pins 7 and 10 on U16. Okay, so U16 is this guy right, right here, and this is U15. It goes... Um, 5 volts goes into this, this breaks it down into 2.3 and 2.2, and then this goes over to here and outputs 2.2 and 2.5 or so. So we check these two pins, and I've, I've, I've written this on my cheat sheet here, right up here, where, where those pins are, you see. So pin 7 and pin 10. So pin 7, 2.3 volts, pin 10, 2.2 volts. So I'll fire the thing up, and... I will check this pin, get a reading, check that pin. Well, when I did that, I got 4.3 volts DC on both pins. So this chip is not doing what it's supposed to do. So my assumption is this guy is fried. Um, it's not socketed, so it's going to have to be removed. This is a dip 16 and this is a dip 14. Now one of the things I'm researching right now is since this is supposed to spit out 2.2 and 2.4 volts over to this it's actually spitting out 4.3 volts. Has this chip gone bad fried this chip as well? I don't know. I'm going to research that. But I don't think I have this in stock. So I'm going to order it. And of course I'll, when I do I'll get a socket and I'll socket both of these things too. I've also checked all of the resistors around here and everything seems to be okay. Um, all the all the the ratings for the resistors are in thing, and there's t these other two capacitors here. I uh, I'm going to have to get my capacitor tester, which I don't have. But when I'm ordering this one part right here, I'm going to I'm going to order all these other parts too. I might as well. Oftentimes they're pretty cheap. So if I need one of these, and you know they're they're under a buck a piece, I'll get four or five of them. And the same thing with this and any of these other components, and I'll have them around. I obviously have a bunch of Bali 35 games, so it's always good to have the extra parts. So I think we may actually be able to get this thing going, at least assuming that's the only problem. But we've clearly found a problem. There's voltage coming into this chip right here that's supposed to break it down into some smaller voltages, and it's not doing it. And I can pull the, the other board and check it, and the readings are completely different. So this guy is going to have to be replaced. And I guess that'll have to be for another time because I don't have that chip. But if you're watching this in a series, it's entirely possible that as soon as this video ends, magically you will be transported to a further point in time where I can demo whether this works or not. Uh, that's the magic of the internet and filming. So anyway, thanks for watching. This was an interesting kind of deep dive into the circuit board. And um, it's not really is intimidating as you might think and there's a lot of people online that can give you help and direct you into where to go but when you look at these schematics you don't have to necessarily be a super brainy electrical engineer to realize that it says 2.4 volts DC going into pin 3 of this chip so you should be able to put a meter to that pin and uh, if it doesn't read it or it reads it off, well, then you backtrack up to the next thing it's going into and you keep following it back until you see where the numbers go wrong. And we found that the numbers went wrong with that chip right there. So there you go. Making progress a little bit at a time.
Um, thanks for watching. For more, visit pinballhelp.com or catch us. There's a tw I even have a Twitter thing that I never use at pinballhelp. Um, thanks for watching.